Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? I am here, but I do not have my act together. <laughs> I posted earlier in the Facebook group that I wasn't sure if we were going to have a live tonight because I had so much going on and this week was crazy. And uh, yeah, but got it. I'm here. Got a little bit of it together, so we'll see. So I hope some people can still join in tonight. I am about to post it in the group um, that we are live now. So if you're here, say hi. Hello. Hi, Journey of Random Musings and Valerie. How y'all doing tonight? Oh, gotta get a drink. Got my drink. Let's go. Open it up. Hi, Laura's Lace Fabrics. Hi, everybody. Okay. So, let me turn the sound off of my computer. So, I hope everybody's doing good. I hope any of my Southwestern Louisiana, Southeastern Texas people. I hope everybody's doing okay. Here in the New Orleans area, we dodged two bullets this week, which I'm very thankful for. So, hi from Ohio. Okay, I am copying the link and my computer, of course, is being very slow at the moment. So we're supposed to start school this week, but that got postponed. Um, all those things, I did not make plans for tonight as far as what to do. Hi, Barbara. Um, and I did not put a poll out asking, you know, what kind of project y'all wanted to do tonight. So tonight is kind of going on a whim here. Um, but what I need to do is make more masks. So, but a lot of people have been embroidering masks. Um, so I thought tonight we would, I would show you how I make my mask for me and my kids. And, um, and we're going to embroider, this is, this one's going to be for Abigail. So I'm going to put her a little monogram on one side of the mask and then, um, face on the other side. Uh, so I am posting in the Facebook group now. Hi, Loretta. So y'all just give me a second to get all my ducks in a row and then we can get started. Hmm. So I got my baby back. My first baby is my PE 770. I brought her last week, no, two weeks ago when we were stitching, what we were stitching the hat, um, I, uh, it sounded like it was going rough. Hi, Terry. Um, so it sounded extra, like it, it needed some oil and it needed some love. It needed some cleaning. So it's been a while since I had my machine serviced. So after we did the hat, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna take it to get serviced. And I posted in the, um, in the Facebook group that I took it to a place I had not been to before, but it was a brother dealer because I was thinking I needed to, since it's a brother machine, I should bring it to a brother dealer. And I walked in and it was $220, $230 to get it serviced. And I was like, that seems like a lot. So I had said, I'm going to hold off on it because I just bought my new persona. Oh, he is Elise. My co-host is ready to join us for the evening. Hello, Miss Co-host. Ah. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Okay. So, um. Hi. Hi. Okay, Mommy. Hi. Hey, Mommy's got to sit right here. Go sit on your stool. Go sit on your stool. I got to sit right here. Okay. So, uh. I love you, Mama. I love you, too, baby. All right, so 
Wait, I'm sorry. I'm seeing a few things at one time. Um, yeah, so Shannon said hers is 99. The, the, the other time I had had my machine serviced, it was 90, I think. Um, and that was a while back. So I was like, geez, if it's, you know, why would it double in price? And, um, wait, <laughs> she's got to be on top of me. Um, so I thought that was a lot. <laughs> so there was another sewing store that I had, I had been to several times that my mother-in-law bought her machine from, but it was a baby lock dealer. And I, I, I called, I decided to call them and ask them if they service, you know, brother machines too. And they said, yeah, we service all kinds of machines. So I said, how much is it? And they said $99. I'm like, I like that better. So I brought, yeah, <laughs> Susan said, see ya. <laughs> so I brought my machine to the baby lock dealer, much better price. And um, they took care of her. So I got my baby back today. Finally, it was ready earlier, but you know, with two, you know, they didn't come and I'm thankful for it. Uh, but we were supposed to have two hurricanes this week. And so I held off on going to pick it up. <laughs> but um, hi, Della from Michigan. Uh, right, a journey of a random musing says that you might as well save up for a new machine. That's what, I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I went and I brought my machine in and I walked right back out with it. I told my husband, I said, they want $230. I said, a brand new machine. I mean, before pandemic, when you can buy them, $600 for a new machine. It's like, that's, it's more than a third of the cost. So that's a lot. Yes. Yeah, so, but I got my machine serviced. She's all better. And the, the man at the, the sewing machine shop recommended that I get a new foot, a new Q foot, which is this guy right here. So I got a new one of those Mommy, since my machine Mom, is seven years old. Mommy, it has some wear and tear on it. What is what, this called? The Croods. The Croods? Mm -hmm, that's a good movie. I don't, watching her sister's phone. <laughs> I don't so, know um, about this movie. We'll watch it. It's a good one. Okay. So let me go back and see. Um, okay. Laura Lace Fabric. No, 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 no. <laughs> said, which USB drive is compatible uh, with the Butter PE 800? Any that I'm aware of. So it's, well, where is my drive? Please, I like I need this to, one. Okay. I need you to get down. Um... What are these called? These are called USB, uh, the, just the old fashioned one. I know they have a new one out now called a C, USB dash C. That's the ones, that's the newer USBs. Um, but I don't know if this is called version A or B, but a regular looking USB nah. that's compatible with the PE 800. What baby? Eh. Hold on. I, no. Oh, you okay? I'm okay. Okay. You can't climb. You can't sit right here while mommy's doing her video. Okay. Can you can you go get your stool and sit next to me? Mommy. Go get your stool. You want to play that? No, I want this one. Okay, we'll play that one. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so um, USB A. That's what I was thinking. So this is what works with the PE. 770 like I have and the PE 800 because I used this when I did a 800 unboxing so all right so anyway Susan X does that place sell machines yes both both the places I went to the brother one was a brother dealer and one was a baby lock dealer and as most of y'all know um, brother and baby lock are owned by two brothers and both machines are manufactured at the same facility so they're they're essentially identical machines um yeah the usb um c is smaller and that's on the new max yeah so my husband has a newer mac and his even to charge his computer is a usb c um drive and he only has those on his computer they, they, apple calls them thunderbolt too so all right where am i so I, what am I doing tonight? Yes, we're doing a mask. <laughs> so a couple things I wanted to tell you beforehand. Um, links for what I'm doing is in the description box below. I think I put most of them. I think I still have some more to add and I'll do in a little while. Um, so we're making a mask and we're gonna embroider it. I'm going to cut the material and the pattern for the mask using my Yes, Sip, thank you. Um, my Silhouette Cameo 4. And the pattern 
the, the cut file for the mask is free on the Silhouette Design Store. I think that's what it's called. And I put a link to that in the box below. I think I put it already. Yeah, it says free mask SVG file. So if you have a cutting machine, um, at this one might only, it might only be, they might only give you the format to use with the Silhouette software. Um, so I don't know if it'll work if you have a Cricut. But um, that is free. So that's what I'm using tonight. And then I'm, use, I'm gonna do a monogram with a font from Joy Kate Designs. And I have that linked in the box below. And then the last thing is this just happened to, I, I just started playing with digitizing and making my own designs. And I use Embrilliance Stitch Artists Level 2. And sometimes people in the group are asking for things if it's possible for me to digitize things. And one, uh, nobody, no one even asked me to do it. Someone, someone was looking for a smiley face design and they couldn't find one that was small enough to put on a mask. And so I was like, I can make that. I'm pretty sure I can make that. That's simple. So I played around with the software and I made it and I posted it. And so it's in the Carly Bell um, Facebook group. Uh, and if you go to files, you'll see it's the only file in the group, but it's, and I only loaded it, I think, in PES format. So if you want it in a different format, um, I'll try and, and do that when the live is over tomorrow where I'll put it in multiple formats. But it's just a cute little um, smiley face and it's only like an inch and a half round. So if you would like that design, you can join my Facebook group, excuse me, <laughs> the link for the Facebook group is in the description box below and you can go and get that file out of the group so that's what we're doing tonight and i think that's all i needed to tell you so those things where you could get the free mask design the font is from joy kate um, designs and the smiley face is free in my facebook group so with that let me show you the mask so when you get it from silhouette it's going to look a little di bit different i modified it a little bit i made three sizes i made a size for my four-year-old a size for my eight-year-old and then one for me and i color coded them in the software so um so that i know which one is which so like the pink ones are elise's the purple ones are abby's the green ones are mine um, and then i made some even bigger ones down here but this is after me playing with the, the software, um, playing with the design. But when you get it, it's gonna give it to you in what they consider to be the small size, and they tell you how to scale it depending on you know, what size you want. So that's after you download the free SVG file. Oh, not, it won't be SVG, it'll be a Silhouette Studio file. Uh, so I'm just, I already, I always do the inner parts of my masks with white. Um, and then I do the, the outer line. This is, so this is the inner lining. Um, and the outer lining I do with a pretty fabric. So I already have my, my inner lining cut out. So I'm going to cut out the, the pretty fabric. So this is the pretty one we're gonna do today. So I already have it cut out according to my, my mat. I need about 10 inches wide and six six inches tall. So my mat? I have a mat that I've been cutting out fabric with. So it's really lost, it's lost its stickiness. It really doesn't stick um, now that I've, I've used it a bunch. So I use my spray adhesive that I use for embroidery, you know, to stick for, for the hoop and everything. So I use this and spray this on my mat to kind of re-sticky re it. <laughs> and then, let me put y'all, y'all see my mat? So this is, this is the mat, it's clear. And I'm just going to put my fabric on there where I have it set up to be cut. And then I got this little tool and I love it. It's called I think a Bayer roller I don't know I put I, I'll have the link for it down below but I love the um, the colors but I've been using this to roll the fabric 
down on the mat to make sure it sticks good and there's no wrinkles in it because that will mess you up when cutting. Okay, so once that's done, then we are gonna take it over to the machine and gonna load it on so the cool thing about the cameo 4 is it has the second blade you can put a specialty blade in there so one option is a deep cut blade a craft blade or this what I have in now is a rotary blade so it's just like my rotary blade I used to cut my fabric and um, it's going to cut the pattern out but it looks it works a little differently because it has to turn. So like now when I go to send, so I already have it set up. One thing I do recommend though, when you pick your material, they have, you know, cotton thin fabric as a choice. I find I still get snags, like it needs a little bit more pressure. So I've been choosing to cut felt and that makes it have a little more pressure and it cuts the fabric a lot better. But you could see, see these like weird blue loops here? That's where the blade has to turn. But all those things are gonna be outside of my pattern area. So it's okay that you see those. So I'm gonna go ahead and send that to the machine. And let it cut. And if y'all wanna watch it work. this ear she's like tell me what am I doing here <laughs> dancing did not take as long as I thought it was going to and um, so now it's done it's done cutting uh, so I'm gonna eject that out and hopefully my point will be proven with how easily it comes off so like previously when I was using the setting for fabric um, I would still have to go and make a lot of little snips but with felt it peels right off, ta-da, and we're done with that. So, then just pick your pieces, and now I need to figure out where we're gonna put the embroidery designs. So, put that there. Um, okay, so let's think. All right, hi Jenny. All right, Barbara said um, she got her dream machine service for less than 150. Yeah, and that's a much bigger, fancier machine than mine. So yeah, I'm happy with that I called around and, and found another shop. And um, also I wanted to tell you while I was there, I had to sit down with the man that serviced my machine and asked a bunch of questions on maintenance. So maybe another sip, sip and stitch. We'll talk about maintenance or I might try to make just a a YouTube video for that topic only um, so that we can talk about that because he gave me some pointers. Um, hi Carol, how you feeling? How's your recovery going? Miss Carol had to have surgery earlier this week so hope she's doing good. <clears throat> okay so we got our two mask pieces and let me make sure I cut the right white piece. Oh no. This white piece doesn't match. Let me go look over here. This might be for Elise. Let 
And these white pieces, I think, are for me. Oh, crap. I thought I had a white piece for Abby. I already cut it. Okay, now I gotta cut some white. That's okay. We can do that while this is stitching. Um, while we're monogramming this, then I'll cut out the white. Okay, so let me figure this out. So I measured my monogram is about two inches wide by like a quarter inch tall. So I kind of want it, like if you're wearing the mask, it's gonna be right right here um, on the side. And then the other side, I was just gonna put the smiley face kind of in the center on the bottom, like that. So I'm gonna use my grid to figure, and then I also have to take into account my seam allowance. So I'm gonna have, I don't think a half inch, maybe a quarter inch or so seam allowance. I'm not the most, not super sewing person. I'm learning, so I'm not very good with seam allowances yet. I just kind of go with what I think is right. And it's probably definitely not consistent. Here is my silver ruler. Huh? Oh, here we go. We were talking about that in the Facebook group too, how we lose everything. I have two of everything. One on this table and one on the other table. <laughs> so, my design is about two inches. And I gotta think about all the seam allowances. I'm gonna say my bottom is here. Where, where this fold up is. So I'm considered like that's the bottom of my mask. And I know my font is a, a three quarters of an inch tall. So I'm gonna just make it like it's an inch tall. And I am going to put the center of my grid a smidge above where the half inch mark is from the seam allowance. Does that make sense? So. But this is really eyeballing. It's a little bit hard to do. I should have printed out the um, monogram so then I could see right where to put my, my crosshairs. But going in, folding it where I think the seam allowance is and going up a little bit more than a half inch, that's gonna give me a little bit clearance below the monogram and then I think that's gonna sit kind of right where I want it. So I'm going to put some marks where I can, and then I'm gonna lift up the grid and kind of put that mark and that mark. So I don't know if you could see what I did. And now I'm gonna make my crosshairs. And we're gonna float this on some cutaway. Um, and then just cut it away out after and I think it'll be fine. Okay, so that side's probably gonna have the monogram and this side will have the smiley face. So I'm gonna fold up my seam allowance again. And the smiley face is an inch and a half. So I might shrink it a little bit. Maybe not, I'll leave it like that. So if it's an inch and a half, I'll make it like a quarter or so down. Some, you know, quarter inch of space between the bottom and the top, or maybe here, <laughs> something like this. Okay, and then I'll put my grid. No, like it. What's the matter, Lisey? No like it. No like it? No like what? There's a movie that you told me that's good. Oh, you don't like the crudes? No. That's okay. Well, you can pick something else. Yay! Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so... I can watch. 
because I'm out of energy. You're out of energy? Guys, we need to pick something for Elise to watch. What will you love, Sophia? You want to watch Sophia? Uh. Where's Marinette? Oh, what about Barbie Princess Charm School? Uh. That's a good one. Yeah, uh, uh. Oh, mermaids. You know, mommy loves mermaids. I don't love, I don't like that movie. Okay, well, you go pick something. Okay, so I'm measuring mommy, from my I smiley watch face. Trolls. Okay, we'll watch Trolls. I think I put it a little bit too You uh, want to watch it with me? It's a little different. It's a little different? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to move this I know a what smidge, it is. smidge higher. Watch this. Mommy! What, baby? Okay. So I got my placement marks. Mommy! On both of these. I hope they're good. Is this Let's see. the cartoon of trolls? Yes. That's a good one. Okay. So now I'm going to use my 4x4 four four hoop. Okay, wait. Let me look and see. Um, yeah, Carol said the brother scan and cut is a great... Um, machine for cutting fabric as well and the Cricut Maker also has a rotary blade and can cut fabric nicely. So Monica you need to try that. Uh, Brenda SVG. SVG is kind of a universal cut file. It will work on any machine but then Silhouette has their own um, format you know kind of like how we do for embroidery. Silhouette has their own format um, I forget what it's called. So I forget what the the acronym for it is, but it's the Silhouette Studio software, and it will only open in that. And I think the link that I put for the pattern for the face mask will only open in the Silhouette um, Studio software. Let's see. Um, okay, Connie said, "What type of file does Silhouette use?" Uh, any it can open SVGs um, so PES is an embroidery file but you can open PES files in Silhouette Studio and I've done a video on that before where I use the the stitch file and you can turn it into a cut line and that's how you can cut appliques and I have a video um, I'll try to link to later and show you uh, do -do. So Connie said she's loving appliqueing, but she might need a silhouette or cricket to cut things for me. Um, that's what Brenda just just bought one to do that with, and I'm still. I think Brenda's done a few things, but I still need to help Brenda some uh, learn her machine more. But yes, you can cut out applique fabric with the silhouette. It really it comes in helpful for really intricate um, cuts and. Um, it makes your life a lot easier as far as trying to snip in between a bunch of little tiny um, grooves and, and in between two appliques that are really close together. Um, the Silhouette machine will come in handy with cutting out appliques. Sometimes when it's a really easy applique, it's quicker to just trim it with your scissors versus cutting the fabric, putting it on the mat, waiting for the machine to cut it. So it depends on the project. I don't always use my Silhouette. I save it for those intricate um, things, but I'm loving cutting masks on the silhouette. Love it. Oops, sorry. Um, I do have a link um, to the silhouette cameo four uh, that come. It's a bundle that comes with the rotary blade in the description box below. I get mine from Swing Designs, so I do have a link for the machine down below along with. Um, just the rotary blade and a strong grip map for fabric if you already have one, but you don't have the blade yet. Okay, so back to this. I have my 4x4 four four hoop, and I'm just going to hoop some cutaway. Elise is like leaning against me as I'm standing here. She has to be, she's not on top of me, she's leaning against me. <laughs> Okay, so just hoop and cut away. 
And for anyone that doesn't hasn't done this before, this is called floating, where you only hoop the stabilizer. And then I'm gonna use my grid and my disappearing ink marker. And they have little holes in the grid and I just push my marker through those holes just like I did on the fabric. And that makes my placement marks. And I just draw some crosshairs. And now let's do the monogram first. And I'm gonna trace it on the machine too to make sure I did it right. Uh, try not to get adhesive all over the place. So I have a grocery bag I stick this in. Now it's sticky and this one's my monogram one and so I have my placement marks on here you could see and I'm just gonna line them up right on top my placement marks on the hoop and it's really easy to do when you have such a small piece of fabric so once you get it on there just press it down Just rubbing it is making the placement marks go away let's see oops sorry so now it's just stuck on there and I think I'll use a tiny piece of topper just so that no you know what I'm not going to use topper because I'm using a sketch font and it's not the topper won't really be necessary with a sketch font if you're doing a real thick satin monogram then then use the topper um, that's going to help the edges of your satin stitch look nice and clean, um, but with the sketch, it won't matter. So, cause it's not that dense. All right, now turn my baby on. Let me show you the monogram I'm gonna do. This, I love this font. It's called, um, I think it's just called Scallop, but I don't know if you could see it. It's uh, It has the option to do the inside a different color. So, um, and then, Lisey, no, you can't sit right here, baby. No, no, you can't sit right there, I told you. Okay, actually, before I start, so, right now you can see it switches from pink to red you know I'm gonna leave it like that because I'm using this machine so that's gonna so now it's gonna stop in between every step so then I won't have a bunch of jump stitches if I was going on my persona with this on a machine that cuts jump stitches I would do a color sort in Embrilliance Essentials and um, and it would move all those light pinks to go together and then all those reds to go together so then there's only two thread changes I'm still only gonna do two thread changes on my smaller machine here but um, I'm gonna jump around in the on the machine itself so what two colors would look good with this I want to do yellow because the smiley face is to tie into the smiley face on the other side and maybe fill the inside with uh, okay so let's do yellow maybe the outline in yellow and the inside with where's my other pink i don't know if i do a light pink or even she would like uh i don't know what to do what do y'all think what to what to what color would look good with the font with this let me turn on another light Ugh. okay um so we have kind of a darker pink kind of a lighter pink i'm gonna do the yellow Maybe go with the lighter pink. It might go over this dot right here though. We also have this corally color. Do I have, I have this color? This might be pretty. I don't know if y'all, the lighting is not great in here. You see my big, <laughs> that's why I have my big umbrella in the back because I can't see in here most of the time. I want to get a strip of LED lights to put under here. That's what I really need. I bought these little touch lights, but they don't do anything. They're not bright enough at all. 
Okay, we'll do yellow and coral. Outline in yellow, fill with coral. I think that will be pretty. Okay, so now I have to save the design on my flash drive. I cleaned up my flash drive the other day so I don't have 70 designs on it. I, um, so it's a little easier to find things now. Okay. All right, Connie says you have an LED lamp. I saw some nice lamps, but I have a lamp here, which might be too bright to show y'all, but it's just a, a regular little desk lamp. Um, I still got my camera set up from last week. I haven't taken it down. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, I want to, you could buy like the cabinet lighting. That's what I want to put like the strip and go along this whole shelf up here. I think that would work. Okay. Let me put it back on YouTube so I could see what y'all are saying. I'm sorry, I'm being slow with the comments. Okay, there's her thing. Okay, so I'm gonna load this. And I'm gonna load the coral thread. Cause I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna do a trace so I could really see where that monogram is gonna hit on the mask. And if you're new here, I use a thread stand. That was always loose for me, so now it feels a little tighter. Let me pull this. Of course. Oh wait, am I supposed to be down? foot down got my thread okay where can I go adjust layout and then they have a little oh you better uh, give her my iPad back here Lisa here set her up okay so okay after I hit adjust they have this little, it looks like a dashed line going in a square with a needle. That's your trace function. And that's going to give you some, I don't know how good you could see this, but I can go around my design. So I could go look in the upper left corner, the bottom, the bottom middle. And I'm looking at where I made my seam allowance, where I, I had a little fold line. And that's there. So the bottom of the monogram will only be like a quarter inch down from the seam allowance. Maybe not even. So that gives me a good idea of where the monogram is going to hit. Um, and then I can go, you know, see exactly where it's going to hit. At least can I have my phone back? Um, At least can I have my phone back? It doesn't can go... It looks like it goes more towards the back than the middle. I think that's where I wanted it anyway. Hey, plug in the um, headphones to the iPad, please. I'm gonna use my headphones. No, go find some other headphones. Give... Oh boy, here we go, sisters. Abigail, give her back the headphones. Okay, she's gonna give them to you, Lisa. Okay. <laughs> All right, so playing with the trace feature, I could really see where my monogram is going to hit on the mask and make sure it's where I want it. So that's another thing that you can do. No, so now I I'm done like with that. Okay. I need it. And so the first is... It's always a hot mess here, guys. Always. So, it's time for a sip. Okay. Can I talk to you now? No, no, no. What you want to watch, Lisa? You want to pick something or you want me to put it on Netflix? You got it? Okay, we'll watch what you want. Okay. So with this font, there's like a little fill-in section and then an outline. And then a fill-in section and then an outline. I'm going to do all the fill-ins first with the coral, so I'm going to get that stitching. Okay. okay, 
So now it's done with that. And there's my scissors. Okay, now I'm just gonna make sure it's pulled out. And then I'm gonna jump by hitting adjust. Oh, I forgot I have the little dots in between each of the letters and there's a fill in for the dot as well. Very little. Tiny bit. Okay. So now I'm going to jump ahead to the fill in for the R. Gumbo. Yeah, I'm gonna make gumbo. Why now? Go tell daddy you wanna make gumbo. Daddy knows how to make good gumbo. You make jelly gumbo. Yep. Yeah, I also like. Yes, he makes. He, he makes. No, he makes red bean gumbo. <laughs> I think she's watching something with Tiana on. Uh, yeah, red bean gumbo. Go tell daddy. Daddy, 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 daddy,
So if you have an older model silhouette, you can still cut fabric, but you need heat and bond light on the back and a blade dedicated to fabric. But the rotary blade is much nicer. And I have a link, if you have a four but don't have the rotary blade, I have a link to the rotary blade down below. All right. Um, Nicole says, is it the black blade? No, the rotary blade looks like this. It's got a number two on it and you can see it's really, you know, it looks just like the rotary, but it's tiny, tiny. But yeah, that's what the rotary blade looks like. Um, when I had, I used to have a Cameo 2. I just sold it and upgraded it to the 4 this year. Uh, my... So this is, on the Cameo 2, all the blades were called ratchet blades because you had to adjust the depth on it yourself. But the blue one they sold, they marked it as being a fabric blade. But it's just, it's the same blade, but I only used it for fabric. So if you have an older model, but these also work in the Cameo 4. All the ratchet blades work in the 4. You just have to have a special adapter to fit it in the machine. And the adapters come with the machine. But um, I forget what the settings are for it. But um, I usually just use a smidge more pressure than what is recommended. Or maybe, you know, one notch of the blade being longer. So that's for the Cameo. All right. Let me finish this. Okay, so I'm stitching my outline. Um, okay, Brenda says she learned another way for a piece to the opening big enough for a 5x7 hoop too. Maybe so. Okay. Um, I like. have some panties. Um, they have some, some they have some in the dryer. See that like that depth really didn't stitch at all so I'm gonna back up and just go ahead and start it over again okay looks like it's working good now all right oh no Connie had to rip up a, a project started using this machine is there something so I don't have to cut pins every time you skip around <laughs> so the only way the machine is going to stop and cut the thread is if it's moving the next step is a different color because then it's stopping and it's giving you time to change like we're gonna do when we do the smiley face it's gonna stitch the outline the smiley face this eye this eye and the smile all that is black <laughs> thread so it's going to not stop and we're gonna have jump stitches between that but if I really wanted to I could try and make each one of those pieces a different color in in brilliance essentials and software I use and then the machine will stop but I don't have to necessarily change the thread color because I set it up like that in the software program I'm just making my machine stop so that's a way you can get around jump stitches all right last one this is cute. This is like a cute little dainty font. It's not very bold, so it's not, even though it's a little bigger than I would like it to be, because the smallest this font came in was um, 
three quarters of an inch tall. Um, that's the smallest it came in. So even though it's a little bigger, I would have maybe liked a half inch font. It's like cute and dainty and not super gram. So now we could, uh, I'm gonna just go ahead. I could try and save this stabilizer, but I'm not gonna bother right now. Cause that's one thing when you do in projects floating, um, you could try and use the same, you know, to save on stabilizer. Cause we only use this tiny little bit. I could try that and then put the, another, the other part in another section, but to be honest, I don't know. It wouldn't be very stable anymore. But you could do this with sticky tear away. You could pull it out the middle and then just cut a little tiny piece of sticky tear away to put right there and cover it up. But I'm, I'm not gonna bother with the cutaway. I might be able to use it later, but there's a lot of stitching on the back here, a lot. There's my little scissors. Um, I usually don't have this much. I think I kind of had some bird nesting going on with that yellow. So, but that's going to get covered up by the lining so you won't see that. You won't feel it. So it'll be fine. So, away so now that's it on the back and then we'll get rid of those placement stitches later all right so I'm gonna get a new piece of stabilizer you know it seems a little bit wasteful we could I could have probably actually did this little tiny hoop then think about that. I have this little teeny tiny hoop right there. That would help you to use less stabilizer. But I'm just gonna stick with my four by four because that's what I'm comfortable with. Push it in. Make a mark it. So this side is going to be a little smiley face. And again, you can find the smiley, smiley face design for free um, in the Carly Bell Facebook group. placement marks on my other piece and I'm just putting them right on top and push it down and again I could see where I made that little finger press to see my seam allowance so when I trace it on the uh, machine to see where the design is going to hit I can keep in mind my my uh, my seam allowance and make sure the smiley face is kind of where I want it. Now the smiley face does have a satin stitch and it's tiny. So I'm going to cut a little piece. Let's see if I have any scrap pieces of, I keep little scrap pieces of stabilizer in here when I need it. Um, I don't see any topper. So I'm going to cut a little piece of topper. small piece. So I'll put that with my scraps. And I'm actually going to spray the water soluble topper. I'm going to spray it in my hand over the garbage can. So I don't have to pin it and I'll just stick it. Right on the fabric. 
I just hold it in place good enough. So I got some water soluble topper stuck on there so the smiley face edges will look clean with that little satin stitch. Okay, Monica, does the one in the link come with the rotary blade? Yes, I'm pretty sure. I'm sorry if my links look all over the place. Um, I copied and pasted. Yeah, so the Silhouette four, Cameo 4 bundle comes with rotary, rotary blade. That link there get, gets you the machine that I have, and it comes with um, all of the blades. I want to say it comes with the craft, the deep cut craft blade and the rotary blade and the automatic um, changing ratchet blade. And it comes with vinyl and HTV and um, a few extras. Like it's a nice little bundle. So, um, hi Betty, hi Terry. Um, Carol, it's more stable than you think. I'm gonna stretch my money and I reused, oh, monogram stabilizer more than once. Uh, oh, with cutting out the middle of the, the cutaway? Okay, I'll try it another time. I just wanted tonight, I wanted to make sure everything goes right and it wouldn't be like, oh, if I wouldn't have done that, it would have turned out right. <laughs> okay, now I'm plugging my USB, put it back on my computer. I should have had this ready ahead of time, but now, I'm going to put the smiley face design. And that's in designs I made. Copy. Paste. Yep, eject. Okay, so this is the first time I'm stitching out the smiley face. Somebody else in the group stitched it out. I told her to do a test stitch, make sure it looks good. <laughs> and it, it looked cute. Um, she stitched it out, so it should work well. I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do a yellow, this time I'm gonna do yellow fill and I'll do the coral for the, the face. Cause I think the black might be just a little too much on here. So I think the coral outline of the eyes, maybe. What do y'all think? I'll go ahead and do the yellow first. I already got my yellow thread loaded. So let me pull up the design. Smiley face. Very easy to see on my not color screen. <laughs> Very easy to determine. All right, so I'm going to go to adjust, layout, trace. Let me see where the bottom is. I'll put my needle down. Yeah, and it's nice. It's just a smidge above my seam allowance, so I like that. All right, there's the middle, the side, side, top. It's a big smiley face. Let me see. I might make it a little smaller. So I'm going to go back, back. Can I make it smaller on this machine? Size size and I could shrink it in so right now it's an inch inch and a half by inch and a half it's like barely I'm gonna make it that's the smallest it'll make me go uh, 1.4 so it won't let me go much smaller okay I'm gonna go back to trace and it still looks like it's in a good spot okay so now we'll do the smiley face and I'll put my presser foot down and it's going to start stitching the fill of the smiley face. Okie dokie. So let me go to chat. Alright, Brenda says navy or royal blue eyes. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't have it set up to where I can make the eyes a different color. I didn't create stops and brilliance before I loaded it. So whatever color I pick, it's going to be the outline, each eye, and the smile. Um, so, 
maybe a blue. We could do the royal, the royal blue. That might be good. That might be a little better than than black. And they got some royal blue polka dots um, in the fabric, so that might be pretty. We could do that. I also have this blue. I'm sorry, my lighting is not good. I don't know if y'all think this would look good. Next to the yellow. One of these, maybe. Um. Ooh, Terry um, said when she uses her hat hoop, she could turn the sticky stabilizer and get two uses. Yes, that is very smart. Uh. Yes, you can spray adhesive on the water soluble topper. You can do that. Um, it does make your fabric a little sticky after, but you're probably gonna wash it anyway, so it's fine. Um, and Connie says she's hoop stabilizer twice and it held up well. Okay, when I resized it in the machine, did it adjust the, the stitches? Um, it does, but the machine will only let you adjust it just a little tiny bit. So you saw it, it let me go from 1.52 inches to 1.4 something. So it was like, you know, a tenth of an inch and let me make it smaller. So you can see it's a, it's a good size. Where are we at? There we are. So you have to see it's stitching. Let me keep smiley face on there. You know, it's definitely a lot taller than what her monogram is on the other side, but I think it's going to be cute. So, um, yeah, the machine will only let you do a little bit. So, and Brilliance will let you do more, and then I could really keep it in my 20% rule uh, range of, of sizing. Okay, so he likes the royal blue, so we'll do the royal blue for the outline of the smiley face. digitize I can pick when it's a fill stitch you can pick patterns of how you want the fill stitch to look so it's really cool it's, it's very subtle but they have different like you can have waves you can have scales and for this design I picked chevron so it's kind of like a zigzag fill stitch so it's cute but you know, it's very very subtle but I'm liking stitch artists but I need to play with it more like there's still a lot I need to learn still struggling with teeny tiny lettering in a satin stitch. That's what I really need to work on because I did my girls school uniforms but I'm not happy with them. Like the lettering doesn't look as good as it should. So I need some help with that. I need to figure it out. we're done with stitching this we're gonna sew the mask together and I wanted to show y'all these I need to find the link for them I ordered these off of Amazon but this is what we're gonna use to make the mask so with the kids especially and then if you're making a mask for people it's hard to really judge the the length of the elastic to put around the ears like I, I've been struggling with that like and then I make them for myself and then I wash them and then they feel tight so I found Brenda found these on Amazon and so I ordered some too and they're they're not the same as the elastic I ordered I don't know what the material is exactly but they're really nice and they come with this little and it's like a soft foamy bead and you can adjust so for the kids especially um, I can adjust it so that it fits them perfectly and then I can move it up, you know, if it needs to be longer. So I don't remember. I know I got them off of Amazon. I have to find the link and when I do, I'll post it in the description box for y'all, but that's what we're going to use tonight. All right. So the yellow is finished. We'll cut, pull through. And let's do the royal blue.
So when this is done, there's gonna be jump stitches that we'll have to cut. you're talking about um but uh pelar beads maybe i forget but um yeah i saw that too and actually my husband after i showed him this and he's like well if i keep sliding this will that would this come off and i'm like yeah it looks like it can if you keep doing it so he pulled it for Ab the the mask i made for abigail he um he pulled it and tied a knot here so that knowing the kids they will They will pull it off. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and put some knots as much on the end of this as I can as possible. So, like that. And then I could slide that. So, it just makes it a little bit shorter of what you can adjust it, but for the kids, it doesn't matter. If you were putting it on an adult, maybe don't put that knot because you might need the length. All right, and our smiley face is done. You came out cute. So it looks like a, a little, little tiny bit of puckering around the edges here, um, but not bad at all. I'm gonna cut these jump stitches. All right, this looks good. I was, um, I'm still doubtful of my digitizing skills. <laughs> I'm still learning, so I didn't know how well it would stitch out, but I am very happy with this. It's a little hard to get those jump stitches in between the eyes because it has a fill stitch underneath so you don't want to snag the the yellow from the fill stitches so that's when these little tiny scissors really come in handy like you can you know get it right underneath the thread that you want so here she is with no uh, jump stitches and we can go clean it up and then we can put the mask together and we're all done. All right. The back looks good. What, baby? Look. Yeah, that's from putting your elbow on the rug. She's got little indents in her elbow. <laughs> what am I doing? All right, let me pull it closer. All right. Whenever doing stuff like this, make sure you don't cut your fabric. I'm always paranoid when I have cutaway stabilizer that I'm gonna cut my fabric on accident. Okay. So 
I just cut it right around. So now before I, oh crap, we never did the white. I need to cut the white still. All right, let me get a piece of white fabric. Oh wait, what's this? Please be for Abigail. Hey, I got some. <laughs> I found some. All right, I separated it, I hit it. Okay, we got white fabric. It's actually a smidge smaller. I wonder if this is from, this is from before I adjusted it. This should be okay. Yeah, it's just a smidge smaller. Okay, we'll use this, this will work. All right, I got my white fabric for Abby. So now we can go to the sewing machine. So let me get rid of these placement marks first though. I'm gonna take my tie pin and get my purple placement marks off. You can also use water. The, the mark will disappear with water, but I find you have to like soak. The material it has to be soaking wet. So um, with the tie pin, it comes off a lot easier and quicker. All right, so we got placement marks off. So now we're gonna sew each together. So let's see. Oh, we probably like it better. A better view over here. All right. Turn this baby on. So this is my sewing machine. Um, I just got it in March. It's a Brother CS6000i. They did come out with a newer model, a 7000i. Can't find either one of them in stock anywhere. So, <laughs> But if you ever do find one, they're a nice machine. All right, so I'm going to do my white first. And I'm just, with the white, it doesn't matter because both sides are the same. But you would put the right sides together. And we're just going to stitch down the front curve here. So we'll do that first. And I am not a seamstress, but I am learning. But I know to do back stitch. cut my threads as we go because I hate dealing with a bunch of threads after. All right, and now my embroidered front part, right sides together, and just stitch down the front curve section. froze I'm sorry I got low battery okay I stitched along the curved edge of each one of these and now I'm gonna use my pinking shears to cut so that I don't have a bulk um, around the, the front that goes around your nose so I just cut this in my little trash tin here Miss Carol, tell me if I'm doing anything wrong because I know you are the expert mask maker. <laughs> I 
Okay, so I did that. And now I'm gonna take my pretty fabric and open it up. And I'm going to ooh, turn my white fabric where the right side is poking in. So right sides together, put these together. And now we're gonna sew along the top and the bottom and we're going to leave the sides open and wait to do that with the elastic. So I don't pin anything. I just line it up and stitch. the bottom straight across. mini iron really comes in handy. So I'm going to turn this right side out. I'm sorry if y'all have any questions while I'm doing this. I'll go back and look at them when we're done. Because we are almost done. I'm going to turn this and then I'm really going to get my point poked through here. It goes over the top of the nose. And you can see the smiley face, the placement looks good. And the monogram. I like how the monogram is a little bit inconspicuous. It's not too, too bold. All right, so now, and then I'm gonna iron it and get those edges looking a little bit better. Okay, so little tiny mini iron, love it. And I do have a link for it, but I don't think I posted it yet. I only was able to get half of my stuff loaded before the live started. So when we're done, I will go and update the links underneath the video. So, um, but, and then also I use this iron. So I wash, I wash my masks, um, in like a little fragile laundry mesh bag and then I don't put them in the dryer because I shrunk some of them already and I let them air dry but they're all wrinkly and then I I iron them <laughs> before we use them again because I keep them in the car in the glove box so every day we got a fresh one um, so I wash them on the weekend and then uh, so I have them all ironed so sometimes when you iron your placement, the purple marker will come back up again. So it can just wipe it with a tied pin. So it looks good. All right, so now that we have, you know, it kind of pressed um, just for the shape, um, now we're gonna press these edges in. So we're gonna do just like a half inch, quarter of an inch. I'm not very good with measurements. <laughs> I put as little as, as the smallest amount that I can 
folded it in. So now we have the raw edges are folded inside of it. And then press that. And that's where we're going to stick the elastic and do a top stitch um, down the sides. So now we got a nice smooth edge on both sides and let me get my elastic. My bag of elastics. Alright, and I do want to tie the knot in the other one. So I got it not tied in that one. Let me do this before I stitch it. I think you can you'll still be able to do it after, but let me just get it done. Just try and pull it as close to the back as you can. But yeah, you could also do this with um, the beads too. So, okay, we got our two elastics. So just one at a time. You're just going to stick the elastic in between the two pieces of fabric. Only stick it in a quarter of an inch. Um, Hi, Mom! And then stitch on top of it. Hi, Lacey! And then stick the bottom one down here. So that side is done. Now do the other side. Works out good where you kind of back stitch right over the um, where the elastic is to kind of reinforce it, and that is all. So we are done with the mask. I don't know if it'll fit me um, since I got it adjusted. Let's see. So this one's for Abby. So it has her little monogram. And it has a smiley face. It's got a little bit of puckering right here, but not too bad. If I spray some water in it and iron it, it'll probably come out. But this is Abby's mask. I think it came out pretty cute. So, okay, now I can go back and look at the, the comments to see if y'all said anything while I was doing that. Sorry. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right, we're doing a lot better now with me not dropping the camera. I'm excited about that. <laughs> so, okay, let me go back. Oh, not too much. Okay, so Nina said, what brand of thread am I using? For the sewing machine, I have no idea. <laughs> Embroidery machine, I use Exquisite. That's my favorite. 
exquisite thread. Um, sewing machine that doesn't even have a label. <laughs> it's just white thread. Um, it's probably a Coates and Clark or, or um, it's the other brand from, it's from Walmart probably. I am not a seamstress, so I know there's probably a lot better thread I should be using, but I haven't gotten any yet. <laughs> I think Aurafil is a really popular brand with, um, with the sewing machine. Ms. Carol could probably give a much better recommendation than I can. But that's just plain, I think it's just polyester all purpose sewing thread. But one thing I do do, it's because I'm lazy, um, <laughs> I don't wind a lot of bobbins for the sewing machine. You know, I make it a point when I'm doing something colored, but since I do a lot of white, or for some of the masks, like my darker black mask, I'll do a black top stitch, but I still do white for the back inside because I do a white lining. So I mainly use white bobbin thread. I have been using my pre-wound bobbins that are for the embroidery machine in my sewing machine. That's what's in there now. So I got a big box of pre-wound bobbins. Uh, so these are for the embroidery machine, but they work great in my brother's sewing machine too. So the weight, the weight is probably not right. This is 90 weight, um, but it works great for my little sewing projects, real sewing projects. I'm not sure. Miss Carol will probably tell me if I'm doing it wrong, <laughs> but cause I don't like to wind bobbins. So, uh, all right, okay, uh, Gutterman or Guterman and Mettler. Okay, I know those brands. I have some Guterman embroidery thread I bought at Joann's. Um, that works pretty nice, but you only get a tiny bit. And I think this costs like $4, and it's only 200 yards, 220 yards. Whereas I got this, like I got this at the sewing machine shop today. This is the Robinson and Anton, and it's 1,100 yards, and it was four or five dollars. I forget. So um, it's not practical to get it from Joann's. So you do better go into a sewing machine shop for um, embroidery thread. So. Um, yeah, they sell. Uh, yeah, they do sell larger ones for um, for sewing. I haven't seen larger ones for embroidery. I don't think, or maybe have been five hundred yards was the biggest. I don't know. So, that's it for tonight, guys. Cute embroidered mask. So, um, I used cutaway um, tonight. Other options would be, you can iron on some poly mesh and float it on tearaway then you could really get the most out of your hooped stabilizer because um, you could do one project at the top and the other project at the bottom and just tear them off and go in between. Um, but if y'all have any more questions, just let me know. Um, I'm gonna go to the YouTube and update the rest of the links for the bottom of the, the um, description box. I think I only got as far as my applique scissors. I got some more supplies to put underneath there. But um, just to recap, the free Silhouette sewing pattern is linked below from the Silhouette Design Store. This font is from Joy Kate Designs. It's linked below. And this smiley face design is free um, if you're in my Facebook group, which is also, they have a link to that below if you're not already a member. Um, and then... I need to make a mental note to find you a link to these elastics on Amazon. That's the only thing I don't know off the top of my head. But that's it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed my quickly thrown together project because I didn't have anything planned. Um, for future projects, I have a lot of ideas. I just have to get things done because like some things I want to do I've never done before. So I need to do a practice run <laughs> to go through them to make sure I know what I'm talking about a little bit before I show y'all. So some of them, I really wanna make these cute in the hoop name tags. 
um, anchor on the porch. And they have a sale right now through the weekend if you want to go and grab some. They have adorable in the hoop, in the hoop zippered bags and zippered pur purses. And then cute little like charms to hang on purses or backpacks. Um, and uh, key fobs and name tags all kinds of cute stuff I could see me putting on my girls backpacks and making them little pencil cases and stuff like that so that's a bunch of stuff I want to do but I've never done before so I need to go through it but then once once I see how it all works which I'm pretty sure it's going to be straightforward then I want to do that for a Friday night live yeah Monica I know you love um I'm pretty sure you're the, you're the one that showed me some Parker on the porch stuff um and then uh, lots of other projects that I want to work on. So if anything, um, I want to do a hooded towel. I want to show y'all how to do that. Um, and then if there's anything else that y'all would like to see, please leave in the comments below or post in the Facebook group um, so we can get kind of a list going of things we want to do for Friday night. So I hope everyone enjoyed tonight's tutorial um please make sure you like this video <laughs> i'm getting better at trying to remember that so if you can give this video a thumbs up i'd greatly appreciate it um if you haven't already join the facebook group and if you'd like to see other tutorials and um, posts that i've done about machine embroidery um, you can go to my website which is carlybell.com so Thanks again for everyone joining in, and I will see y'all next Friday. Bye.